Good evening. Good evening. Today's liturgy will start with the liturgy of the fire outside. symbolizing, first of all, the Israelites who were laid by the light that God provided for them in the desert. And for us today, the light is Jesus Christ. God who is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And then there'll be a procession of the light into the church. After that procession, there will be the exotet singing around the light, around the Easter candle, which will be followed by the readings of the history of salvation from the Old Testament. After all the seven readings, we are going to have the Gloria, which will mark the resurrection of Christ, and then we'll have the liturgy of the Word from the New Testament, followed by the homily, and then baptism. After that, we'll go straight into offering and the liturgy of the Eucharist. So we have these steps that we are supposed to follow, which we are supposed to understand. I wish you a blessed and glorious liturgy. Thank you.
spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the change calls upon our sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mystery, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the true fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these Paschal celebrations, we may be so inflamed with heavenly desire that with mind and heart made pure, we may attain festive of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. All time belongs to him and all ages belong to him be glory and power through every age, forever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ our Lord Guard us and protect us. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds.
Shall we be seated? up your hearts to the Lord. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord.
dear brothers and sisters, dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people. And in these, the last days, has sent us the Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this Paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. As we begin to listen to the word, we'll ask that we turn off our candles. From the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. 
and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, one day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and separated the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And there was evening and there was morning a second day. And God was under the heavens, be gathered together into one place. And let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together, he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind upon the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, a third day. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, a fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let the birds fly above the earth, across the firmament of the heavens. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarm according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, a fifth day. And God said, 
Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, cattle and creeping things, and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the cattle according to their kinds, and everything that creeps upon the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, a sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. The word of the Lord.
Let us pray. You may all stand. reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here am I. He said, take your son, your only begotten son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering upon one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering and rose and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw a place afar off. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come, come again to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son and took in his hand the fire and the knife. And so they went, both of them together. And Isaac said to his father, Abram, my father, and he said, here am I, my son. He said, behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Then Abraham put forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only begotten son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram, caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. 
And the angel of the Lord called to Abram a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and, and have not withheld your son, your only begotten son, I will indeed bless you, and I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is, in, which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your descendants shall all nations of the earth bless themselves, because you have obeyed me. The word of the Lord. from the book of Exodus. In those days, the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the sons of Israel to go forward, lift up your road, and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the sons of Israel may go on dry ground through the sea. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they shall go in after them. And I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his hosts, his chariots and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. When I have gotten glory over Pharaoh with his chariots and his horsemen, then the angel of God who went before the host of Israel moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved before them and stood behind them, coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. 
and there was the cloud and the darkness, and the night passed without one coming near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided, and the sons of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, and the waters being a wall to them, on their right hand and on their right. The Egyptians pursued, and went in after them in the midst of the sea. All Pharaoh's horses, his, his chariots, and his horsemen, and in the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and of cloud looked down upon the hosts of the Egyptians and discomforted the hosts of the Egyptians, clogging their chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from before Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, and the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its usual flow when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled into it. And the Lord routed the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen, and all the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not so much as one of them returned. But the sons of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, and the waters being a war to them, on their right hand and on their left. Thus saved Israel that day, from the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw the great work which the Lord did against the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord. And they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the sons of Israel sang this song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider has thrown into the sea. The word of the Lord. persecution by the power of your right hand. Now you bring about us the salvation of the nations 
through the waters of river. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Natum foe ifio kasovela isaya alembele. Omo wumbi shiove, akava umwina mobe. Ishinadia kwe, nimfu muyafita, umulubu shiove. Umukata mi wakwa Israeli, uitwa lesa wafia lofionse. Nachine, nimfu muile kuita ubwele. Ngomu anakashi uwale kereshua, ule chula mumutima. Bushe umuntu kuti ale keresha umukashi wa mugulumendo wakwe, efi asosa infumu. Kwena, ninkule keresha pakashita akanono. Nomba, nka kubwesha na oluse ulukalamba. Na kufishile impumiandi akashita akanono, pantu na adividime nechipyo. Nomba, na kuwele la uluse kuchitemuiko chape. Efia sosa infumu. Umulubu shiove. Pantu nomba, ndi ifyo nagi mwushu kushakwa noa. Idio na lapile umulaponati, Idieshi ya kwa noa, tajia kabunshe, ichalo na kavidi. Efio na ala panomba, pamulandu, wachipyo na kukwatile, nefikadi na kusokeleko. Pantu, impidi kuti shafuma, no tupidi kuti tuasunkana. Lelo ichitemuiko na kukwatila. Tacha katale achifuma ukoji. Ne chipanga no chachi vote na panga na nove. Tacha katale achisunkana. E mashiwi infumu ikulangulu kila. We mulanda. We upinga nishua kufikuku. We ushitala dikwa. Mona. Nkakudila ama weyove. Kama we, ayaka nkala, ayaka shikila. Nefia mumu fula ove, kama we, ayaka nkala, ayaka safiri. Nkakula, inso nshi, shafi wumba fionse, na mawe, ayaka nkala, ayaka rubi. Nempongolo shove, na mawe, ya kristali. Ne dinga diove dionse na mawe ayakankala. Vamuano aba ume, baka fundu abonse kumfumu. Ishuko diava muano aba ume, dika kula nganshi. Ukakudilwa pabulunga mi. Ukachingidilwa kubuluku. Tawakatale awikatwa no mwenso. Baka kuchingidila kufia kutina. Tafia kakupalame. Aya, emashu ya kwa lesa.
from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Hear that your soul may live, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant. My steadfast, merciful love for David, Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call nations that know you not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you, because of the Lord your God and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on him, and to our God, for he would abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I intend, and prosper in the thing for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Almighty. 
the ever living God, saw hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets and veil the mysteries of this present age, graciously increased the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Baruch. Hear the commandments of life, O Israel. Give ear and learn wisdom. Why is it, O Israel, why is it that you are in the land of your enemies, that you are growing old in a foreign country, that you are defiled with the dead, that you are counted among those in herds? You have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. If you had walked in the way of God, you would be dwelling in peace forever. Learn where there's wisdom, where there's strength, where there's understanding, that you may at the same time descend where there's length of days and life, where there's light for the eyes and peace. Who has found her place? And who has entered her storehouses? But he who knows all things knows her. He who founded her by his understanding, he who prepared the earth for all time, filled it with four-footed creatures. He who sends forth the light and it goes, called it, and it obeyed him in fear. The stars shone in their watches and were glad. He called them, and they said, here we are. They shone with gladness for him who made them. This is our God. No other can be compared to him. He founded the whole way to knowledge and gave her to Jacob, his servant, and to Israel, whom he loved. Afterward, she appeared upon earth and lived among men. She is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endures forever. All who hold her fast will live, and those who forsake her will die. Turn, O Jacob, and take her. Walk toward the shining of her light. Do not give your glory to another or your advantages to an alien people. Happy are we, O Israel, for we know what is pleasing to God. The word of the Lord.
grant to those you wash clean in the waters of baptism the assurance of your unfailing protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, the house dwelt in their own land, they out their doings. So I poured out my wrath upon them, for the blood which they had shed in the land, for the idols with which they had defiled it. I scattered them among the nations, and they were dispersed through the countries. In accordance with their conduct and their deeds, I judged them. But when they came to the nations, wherever they came, they profaned my holy name, in that men said of them, These are the people of the Lord, and yet they had to go out of his land. But I had a concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel caused to be profaned among the nations to which they came. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, It is not for your sake O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations to which you came. And I will vindicate the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, and which you have profaned among them. And the nations will know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God. When through you I vindicate my holiness before their eyes, for I will take you from your nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and I shall clean from all I shall clean from all your uncleannesses. And from all your idols, I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will take out of your flesh the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And be careful to observe my ordinances. You shall dwell in the land which I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord.
our God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection. Stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind, we may render your undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, all of us who have been baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we've been united with him in death like his, we shall certain be united with him in the resurrection like his. We know that our former man was crucified with him so that the sinful body might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For he who has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. For we know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. To
after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, is coming before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Hail. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Very nice. That's a bit different as we are used to Uluchelolwe Pasaka. Panaka Shiva Chilaya Kuchilindi Mukulosha. And you can see everyone is singing. Huh? That's, that's the one we know. It's, it's, it's a very, very good evening, and we are happy to be here, because this is where we ought to be. We are here, for this night is the best night. It's the best. Out of all the nights that you know, this one is the best. <laughs> Thank you. 
And it's the best because in the, during this night, some people will be born in, during this night. And so it's the best night. But when I was seated listening to the readings, I remembered something. Years back, I was sitting along uh, Independence Avenue. And suddenly when we were in the house, there was a big bang outside. So we rushed out, and there was a, an accident, terrible accident. So the moment we reached the gate, a woman came to me and said, I need water. So I panicked. I went in to get water. And remember those days, we didn't have bottled water. It was a container 2.5 and a cup. So I went out to meet this woman. And I'm like, here's the water. And she told me, I actually don't need water. So I'm holding the cup, I'm holding the, 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 the container, I'm looking the other side, people are coming out of the car injured. So I go to that car, and I'm standing there holding the cup and the container. And somebody looked at me and said, but why are you standing like that? You want to give water to everyone. I said, no. Somebody wanted water. So I ran back to that woman to give her water. I found her. She had collapsed. Luckily, she did not die. But I panicked. So as she had panicked because of the accident. And this is what we see in the gospel of today. Women panicking. Jesus has died and they don't know what to do. They can't sleep. And what they see is early morning, they just see the brink of the sun, like it's just coming out. They are already out going to the tomb. And along the way, they remember there was a big stone on that tomb. And they begin to ask themselves, Who's going to remove it? If I was there, I would have whispered to them, the men, the men. <laughs> because they knew there was a stone there. But how do they go? And they start thinking, who is going to remove the stone? And the men are there sleeping as usual. But regardless of the stone ahead of them, they decide to proceed. And they proceeded. They reach, surprisingly enough, the stone was not there anymore. How many of us are in such a similar situation when you are wondering along the way, how is it going to be like? Who's going to pay my school fees? Who's going to remove that stone? I will again whisper to you, the man. <laughs> Unfortunately, they are sleeping. But so, they proceed. The stone has been removed. They are now at the tomb and there is an angel. And this angel speaks to them and tells them, come and see where he lay or where he was sleeping. Come and see. And that for me gave me a point of reflection. Come and see where he lay. Where he was lying, what happened? What was there? Because himself he was not there. So what was there? Do we know? In other scriptures, they tell us that the garments were folded. 
They were folded and they were where he was laying down. The garments. And these garments will take us back to when we began the Easter Tribune, the garments of Jesus Christ. When Jesus wanted to wash the feet of his disciples on Holy Thursday, he removed his garment, put it aside, and went to wash the feet of his disciples. On Good Friday, the garments of Jesus Christ were stripped off, stripped off by force. And we remember they cast lot on who's going to get the garments of Christ. So yesterday when we were having the passion play, I was wondering what will happen that side when we reach that part where they removed the garments. <laughs> but it was good, it was good. The, 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 the youth did very well. Very well. And, um, and uh, yeah, they did very well. And when I was looking at that part, they, somebody had designed a very good costume for them. But if we think of it, with Jesus... It wasn't so well done. It was like a chitenge. But if you are wrapped in a chitenge and you are on a hill, I don't think it does anything. (laughs) But that's what happened. And so stripping off the garments of Jesus Christ, he was literally naked in front of the people. The garments. And now today, we are told, come and see where he lay. And there were only garments remaining. But then we should think, what about the garments? What's the significance? Why didn't he go with them? Why were they so important? And when we think about in, 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 in the Old Testament, when we think of a priest, a priest was meant to atone the sins of the people. That was his role. And so he would go in the Holy of Holies or in the sanctuary, and then he would perform his duties wearing priestly garments, and then after he had done everything, he would remove the garment. Put them aside. Like we do. We come here, we worship. Afterwards, we put these garments aside. We don't go with them in shop right. He put them aside. The job has been done. And that's what Jesus did. The job has been done. Thus he takes off his garments and he folds them nicely and leaves them. A good reminder to all of us, when we leave our bedrooms, that we leave our beds well made, isn't it? Jesus taught us that. It's not new. And he taught the men who were sleeping, whenever you wake up, You fold nicely. (laughs) And that was it. The first lesson. Atonement of sin. And you make your bed nicely. The second thing which we learn is that they were suspecting people would come and steal the body of Jesus Christ. So they put soldiers there. They put the big rock so that nobody could come and steal the body. Now, presumably, 
they had come to steal the body. I don't know if the thieves would have had time to steal the body and fold the garments. They will leave it in a mess. But there was time to fold the garments. Simply proving that the one who was leaving that place where he lay, he left it calmly, comfortably, without any pressure. And the third thing we learn is that when he leaves, when he leaves, he's now in a body, in a state that does not need these garments. He leaves in a state, a glorified state, that he does not need the garments. They have done their job. He has atoned for the sins of the people. Job done. He has risen and his rising from the dead meant that death has been defeated. And the Coppolas would say, In a death in Dakira. That's what it is. <laughs> he overcame death. In other words, he killed death. And there was no more dying. And there is no more dying. For those who believe in Jesus Christ. But we have now been granted eternal life. And thus we should be happy. We should rejoice. Because nothing can threaten us or defeat us anymore. And this is the Christian message. The resurrection offers us eternal life. And Christ has proven that he is the only hope. He is the only one who can kill death. Such that death has no sting. The only hope who comes in the dark and brings light. And as we did in the beginning we came in with the light. And Christ, through the Paschal candle, comes in as the light. And this light should not just end with the candle, but it's a reminder of that Christ has come into us to illuminate our hearts and minds from the fears that we have. That there is no more death, there is no more things that would challenge our faith or our trust in God. Because God himself has defeated everything. No sin is beyond God. We shall not move first. No sin is beyond God. God forgives everything. Forgives sin. And that's what he showed us. He had to go on the cross because of that. That we are redeemed. That we are given new life. And there is nothing that we can do apart from rejoicing. We should rejoice. Because Christ has come into our lives. And Christ brings us close to himself. He gives us the hope through this Paschal candle. We see Christ bringing hope into our lives. That when we are here, we have hope. When we go home, we have hope. 
that whatever we see as a stone in front of us will be taken away. We may not use our hands, but it will be taken away. Whenever we are wondering and thinking, what am I going to do? Just say, I have hope in Christ. It will be taken away. Chap. We are now going to call those to be baptized to come forward. At this point in time, we are going to bless the water, the water which gives us life, and the water from which we are all born in faith. Tell us of the wonders of your unseen path. 
In baptism, we use your gift of water, which you have made a rich symbol of the grace you give us in this sacrament. At the very dawn of creation, your spirit breathed on the water, making them the most free of all honey. The waters of the great plant. You made a sign of the waters of baptism that make an end of sin and a new beginning of goodness. Through the waters of the great sea, you led Israel out of slavery to be an image of God's holy people set free from sin by baptism. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by God and anointed with the Spirit. Your son knew that water and blood should flow from his son as he hung on the cross. After his resurrection, he told his disciples, Go out and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Father, look now with love upon your church, and unseal for it the fountain of baptism. By the power of the Holy Spirit, give to this water the grace of your Son, so that in the sacrament of baptism, all those whom you have created in all likeness may be placed from sin and rise to a new birth of innocence by water and the spirit. I shall now invite you to renew or profess your faith. And we shall begin by renouncing of sin. Father, you have called your children to this cleansing water that they may share in the faith of your church and have eternal life by the mystery of this sacred water lead them to a new spiritual birth we ask this through Christ our Lord Amen. do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of, as God's children I do. do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? I do. do you reject Satan, father of sin and prince of all darkness? I do. Now you shall profess your faith on what you believe. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? 
Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was buried and died, and rose again from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? We are now going to anoint you with the oil of catechumen.
Natasha, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Mulemba Natasha, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Walia Rebecca, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mapalo Cynthia, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Chimolula Mulubwa, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
the God of power and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you from sin and brought you to new life through water and the Holy Spirit. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation so that united with his people, you may remain forever a member of Christ. You may remain forever a member of Christ who is priest, prophet, and king. Amen. You have been clothed in the garments that are white. They should remain spotless. Your hearts should remain spotless. You have become a new creation and clothed yourself with Christ. This baptismal garment that you're wearing should come and be with you and stand until the judgment seat of the Lord, Jesus Christ, so that you may have everlasting life. God parents, you may need to step a little bit forward because we are going to light the candles which we are going to give to the candidates.
you have been enlightened by Christ. So always walk as children of the light and keep the flame of faith alive in your hearts. When the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. Amen. We are now going to ask the godparents to step aside, to go back to their seats, and then we remain with the candidates, the new members of our church. So these are the newly baptized, but before, before I ask them to turn and face you so that you see them, I will invite another group. This is the group of those who were having refresher course. They were refreshing. <laughs> and so they have been refreshed. And they feel they are now qualified to be our new members. So please come forward. And lastly, I'm going to invite those who have joined us from different denominations, those who are now new to the Catholic faith. Please come forward. So as I told you, this is the best night ever. Because we have 49 of the newly baptized. And so these are our, our new members of the Catholic Church. May you please stand so that they know you.
So we wish you all the best, our new members. Continue to radiate the goodness of Christ all around this parish, but more especially in your small Christian communities. Amen.
pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with a sacrificial offering that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may be the working of your power. Bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. And so overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts you in your praise. And even the heavenly powers the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care so that in serving you, you alone, the creator, he, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when though disobedience 
he had lost your friendship. You did not abandon him to the domain of death. For you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek you may find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to the prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits of those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in this world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, we pray, O Lord, may this same Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings that they become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left for us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, he blessed it and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent into the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one 
body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to praise, to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom you offer this sacrifice, especially your servant, Francis, our Pope, Alec Banda, our Archbishop, and the order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your, of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and with your apostles, saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. So him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and informed by divine teaching, we all dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who grants us eternal life. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Emanim, boy. Pour out on us, O oh Lord, the spirit of your life. And in your kindness, make those you have nourished by this Paschal Sacrament, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Three quick announcements. The first one is that tomorrow we are going to have confirmation at nine hours. And we are going to confirm 115. <laughs> then uh, the coming Sunday, not tomorrow, but the other Sunday, we are going to have at 8.30 hours our Lenten Fund presentation. So 8.30, the coming Sunday. Then 11.30 mass, we are going to have baptism, infant baptism. That will be next week. Mary Immaculate. Mary Immaculate. Much better. Let's do it once more. Mary Immaculate. So, congratulations to our new members of the Catholic faith. We thank you for giving yourself to the service of God and His work. And we are looking forward to your contribution at this parish. This is not your graduation. This, you are just being ushered into work. And tomorrow, you shall be confirmed. And I'll testify that you are worthy to work in the Catholic Church. So from tomorrow onwards, you have to join one group. You have to be in a small Christian community because you are confirmed members of this church. Amen. Don't come back 10 years later, no, I want marriage. <laughs> we'll check which small Christian community or which lay group. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. I've been reminded that tomorrow there are two masses. So I spoke about the confirmation, which is at 9. There is another one at 7. So there is first mass at 7 and another mass at 9 now. <coughs> May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endure you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now the day of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close. May you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasting that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you 
and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth the masses and then. Alleluia. Alleluia. Not bad. <laughs>